Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Thursday, July the 28th, 2016. You're looking at a chart of silver. This is the uh, ticker SLV. And you can see here that momentum came off a little bit today and the bullish trend is still intact on the daily chart. Market remains well supported at 1836. And it just took a little breather today based on yesterday's very nice run up. I suspect the market will probably be quiet uh, as tomorrow is take back Friday. So we may see a little bit more down drift getting closer to the trend line here. Probably closing somewhere around the $19 range. Uh, but we could also see a lift off tomorrow so it's, it's, it's up in the air I know the Bank of Japan news is coming out tomorrow to decide what, what it is they're going to do or not do and uh, as of right now um, for the most part all is quiet it's just not a lot going on ahead of that I think every, the world wants to see what's going to happen is Japan going to become like the US and start doing quantitative easing which um, historically has been considered illegal in Japan so are they turning the tide here? Are they going along with the rest of the world down the tubes? I suspect that they're going to do quantitative easing. How else is Bitcoin going to be the new reserve currency? Or should I say the Bitcoin technology? How else can that happen unless everyone collapses simultaneously? So this lets you know that the collapse is near. And when I say collapse, for those of you that are new to my videos, I do not mean the collapse as people think so. I mean the taking away of the old physical fiat and replacing it with digital fiat. I do not mean the collapse of civilization. I do not mean that at all. For further information, see the uh, description at the bottom of this video. And that will take you to the playlist that uh, is currently up on the channel called there is no collapse I do believe you will be highly enlightened moving on now to silver futures okay as you can see here the futures are also quiet momentum coming off uh, after a very big run up yesterday so I suspect this market's going to be quiet too the silver futures though on the daily chart is in a negative pulse wave and it's trying to go positive it wants to break out eventually we're going to break this out here and we're going to head toward 21 and 22 that's that's the upward trajectory pattern that silver wants to take hence you can see the kumo cloud turning up a little bit too so i think that's where we're going to go i think the new support um, is going to be well established at 19 and then again at 20 as we climb the stairs here up to 22. all right looking at the silver miners the silver miners has already um turned into a positive pulse wave situation so it's jumping uh, ahead of silver now all right it's jumping the gun this would not be the first or last time that uh, miners tend to jump the gun ahead of the physical this will be interesting to see I do need to note a couple of things though and the first is this gap on the daily chart down here at the forty four dollar and twenty one cent level and we have another one here and that's going to be about the forty forty one dollar level so we have the gap to contend with from june the twenty ninth and july the first the one the lat the latter one on from july the sixth has already been taken care of we did that right here and we have not dealt with this gap here or this gap here got to deal with it at some point right now though um the silver miners do look to be well supported at 44.93. For those of you that are new to following along, the ticker is on the top left hand side here. So this ticker is SIL. All right, taking a look now here at the gold futures. You can see the gold futures are in a positive pulse wave situation, uh, hitting its head around the 1350 handle, having some a tough time closing above that right now. Uh, tried to do it yesterday, um, closed at the 1347.20. Today took a took a break. You know, it's just taking a break. It's a little tired. 
tomorrow's take back Friday so we could pull back a little bit further down until maybe the 1330 handle but I don't see anything significant here this market is very well supported at 135090 momentum's coming off a little bit from that overbought scenario from yesterday that's all we're doing is just shaking that off and getting ready to blast higher uh, next week in the goal as this market wants to retest the 1370 handle and possibly get up to 1380 and then to 1400 which is our initial target for gold all right looking at the gld you can see here this one uh, wants the pulse wave right now it's negatively pulse waving but it wants to go positive and overhead resistance at 129.09 is blocking that 130 breakout so if it can try to do it tomorrow that'll be great if not then we'll we'll look to next week but eventually this market wants to pop up and get up here uh you know north of this 130 level possibly 140 uh so i'll give it 140 150 we'll, we'll see what happens but the momentum's coming off from the overbought from yesterday as well i don't see anything really happening here on the downside of the market's not far away from the um, the trend line here, this 126.60 is a good support. And then, of course, major support at the 124.26. All right, looking at your miners now, your gold miners. All right, the gold miners haven't jumped the gun yet like the silver miners did, but it's getting there. $30.14 overhead resistance. A pop above that would put the 32.50 in play, which is right here. And this market has not really corrected per se. We closed down on the day slightly, but really no correcting or shaking off yesterday's overbought still overbought so this one is interesting but it's well supported here at the purple trend line at 2880 and the major trend line at 2696 and uh this you know the metals are still strong we'll see what happens new lows in the crude oil futures look at this 4110 is where we're closing right at the 4105 low so here we are overhead resistance at 4423 every day we're just going down 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 just like I told you we would we came right out of that Kumo, that Kumo cloud just like I told you it would and it's getting deeper and deeper down and it's locking in it's locked in into the downtrend and you can see it's getting deeper into the cloud deeper on the weekly chart deeper into the cloud all right eventually it's probably going to break right down below that cloud and retest these lows but because friday is upon us all right winter is coming one of my favorite quotes from the game of thrones and because winter is coming which is tomorrow being take back friday you probably will don't want to get short here's this market will probably rock it tomorrow and shake off some of this um, this extended uh, downtrend every day I got to show you in the daily chart so because that retracement's coming winter is coming you probably don't want to get caught out there short uh, tomorrow on take back Friday I'm just saying do what you want but the odds are against you and you are locked into the downtrend so eventually it's gonna keep going down but I do not think that it will necessarily continue tomorrow we'll probably get one of these which which a good what's a good bar here to give you an example of what I'm talking about mm, let's go with let's go with this one right here okay even though this is not closing well maybe this is probably better see how this closed near the low just like this one's closing basically at the low and then the next bar you do come down you do clip it all right you come down and take out that low but then notice how you reverse all right so these three bars is what I want you to take note of all right that's what's probably gonna happen here tomorrow should probably be green and then Monday maybe maybe red Monday with a, with a, a spike wick like this but then an extended down leg so you got a possible two days like this coming but more than likely it's gonna be another leg sort of like this one how this one came down and closed down then reverse on the third one so you're looking at a three bar play here counting from today tomorrow should be green or if it even if it's this it'll reverse after hitting an intraday low because it's Friday people take money off the table and then Monday could set this up you could even do this again 
but more likely you'll come back down again. So just want to point that out there for you. Be careful in the oil. All right, looking at the OIH, uh, same thing. Not as elongated, <clears throat> excuse me, as on the futures. Not that much price destruction, but in a negative, uh, still in, in a negative pulse wave situation. Oh, excuse me. Uh, overhead resistance right now is at 30.95, and we're oversold, but it's flattened out overall here. Hasn't really hit new lows like the futures is doing. So take note of that. Futures are hitting new lows. This one really isn't. It's still trading within this zone here. All right. You're trading within June uh, June 27th range. So that's that should be noted. That's really a big deal uh, to take note of here. So we'll see. Uh, but you are oversold. It's trying too early to really say it's really locked in yet. We'll have to see how this week ends and then see how next week plays. But if we're down again next week, then this will be locked in and this thing will be it will be in trouble to the downside. This 2046 will be in play. Once again, 2046 will be in play if this uh, if we close down tomorrow and next week this 2046 is in play. Finishing up now with the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar getting worse, coming off more downside still to go, but well supported at the trend line of 95.63, which is in play. 95.63 is in play now uh, for the dollar, as I see it probably bouncing off of that next week, and then taking one more thrust to get outside of the Kumo cloud. So remember. Bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back.